One question I get asked a lot is, what are the best forms of passive income? In this video, I'm gonna share with you the top five ways to increase your passive income in 2022. And when you stay until the end, I'm gonna share with you how you can make money with no money out of pocket. All right, you ready for this? Okay, here you go. Number one, funds. Now, there are different types of funds. Some people might look at mutual funds, and yeah, you can make money there, but I'm actually talking about a different type of fund. Uh, many people have heard type of things like alternative investments. Alternative investments are things outside of the traditional mutual fund type of world, right? Outside of the traditional financial advisor type world. You know, funds, for example, funds might be real estate funds. There might be funds where, for example, someone you loan money to, and they give you a return and, and as a result. For example, there's one company that we've advertised on our podcast before where they'll say, hey, we're gonna take your money, we're gonna loan it out to other real estate investors that are doing fix and flips and doing other things with their money. And then that money comes back short term and pays back into our fund. And so they invest in various different things, almost really diversifying and allocating in different places. And what happens is that you are the benefactor. You get paid the interest as a part of that fund because as it's more profitable, you make more money. This is not to be confused with like what's called a REIT or R-E-I-T, not the same thing. You know, REITs are very different and you can actually lose money in those. Uh, now granted, nothing's guaranteed, even the things I'm talking about here, but uh, these funds can make you a lot more money, even double digit returns just by investing in these things. And again, you're totally hands off. Number two, you can be an affiliate or a broker. Now this is something that I didn't expect to happen in my life. So the very first time I became financially independent, as I started to learn about real estate investing and everything else, I remember I had a friend and he asked me a really important question. He said, Chris, if money were no issue, would you keep doing with what, what you're doing every day? And at the time, I was teaching people how to trade stocks and options, and I was also a mortgage broker. And I said, you know, you know, the stocks and options, not so much. I mean, it's kind of cool, but not really. I'm getting kind of bored of it. Uh, but the mortgage broker thing, I love getting people the results, and I love teaching them about, about the mortgages, but I hate hate doing the paperwork. I don't know if you're the same way, but I hate paperwork. I absolutely despise it. And I hated the fact that people would call me. I said, hey, listen, it might take three or four weeks for this mortgage to close. And then they call me up the next day. Is it going to close yet? It's like, oh, it drives me nuts. And I told him that. And he said, well, Chris, why don't you find somebody who likes doing that? And I said, who would be crazy enough to want to do that kind of stuff? I mean, are there, are there people out there that actually like to do paperwork and deal with this kind of stuff? He said, oh yeah, there's nerds out there, Chris, find them. And so I remember I went to my mortgage broker and I said, hey, is there somebody on the team that could actually go and do the paperwork for me so I can just teach and lead them to him and let him do all the work? And they said, yes, we got a guy for you. His name's Clark, go talk to him. And I said, Clark, if I send these people to you, well, can we split this 50-50? He said, absolutely, I'd love to, because he didn't want to go find people. He just wanted to do the work and do his paperwork behind a desk. Guess what? I made more money in less time because of that relationship. Because now I would spend half an hour to an hour with people, send them on to Clark. Next thing I know, a month or two later, I'm getting a check for like a thousand, fifteen hundred bucks or more, all because I didn't do any of the work. You know, I just did the teaching and just said, here you go. And I thought, that's awesome. That's better than a dollar an hour. Gosh, right? It was so cool. And, and that got my mind going. I was like, well, where else can I send referrals? And so I remember I referred to a wholesale jeweler. They would pay 5%. It was great for the people I referred because they would save, they would pay like a third of the cost, but it was also great for the business owner because it was giving them business. Listen, that now many people might call that a referral relationship, but many people call that affiliate relationship or broker. I made a few thousand dollars a month just doing that very thing, working maybe a couple hours a week. That's it, if that, right? So that's the beauty of this, is that you can actually create passive income and just so you know, again, no money out of pocket for this one. Now, just wait, because there's another one with no money out of pocket coming up, but hold on. Number three, rental real estate. This does require money, but man, it's awesome. Uh, some of the best returns you could possibly get and the most certain returns in any kind of market, any kind of economy, is in rental real estate. Now, you might look back to the last recession saying, oh, that's scary. Well, listen, most of the people that lost money in rental real estate were those that were gambling with the real estate. They were trying to make money on the appreciation. We're not talking about appreciation here. You don't want to gamble on appreciation. That was my investment. My cash flow in the beginning was 380 bucks a month, which was great still. I mean, it was over a 13% rate of return. Now I'm making almost $500 a month on that. And 
guess what? The thing is now appreciated about $80,000. So without me doing anything, I have made money on the appreciation, but the cool thing is the renters paid down my mortgage for me. So now I've gained equity automatically, even if it didn't appreciate. So they've paid down my mortgage for me and I've made tens of thousands of dollars in rental income over the last four years to roughly to the point of about $20,000, huge returns. I've about made my money back just from that alone. The appreciation was just icing on the cake. That was just the extra profit now we've made from this. So now again, results may vary. I'm not saying you're gonna be able to do this. I also had help and I've had experience. I would recommend if you're gonna do something like this, get a mentor, get somebody who knows what they're doing to make sure you do it right and you get the max profits possible when you do this kind of investment. Number four is our, what are called syndications. Simply put, syndications are where you pool money together with other investors and you go invest into something like an apartment building or a self storage unit, or it could be something with oil and gas, or it could be into a business. Really, you're just pulling your money together as an investment. You guys all become partners in an LLC into a corporation, and then you go and invest in that thing. And as it makes profit, you make money too. You make returns on that. So it's kind of a nice way to slice up the pie so you can have a piece of that pie without having to have a ton of money to put into it. Now, usually for syndications, you gotta have at least 25 to $50,000 to start. But the reason that many of my clients love syndications even more than rental real estate is because you don't have to worry about anything. Now with rental real estate, you may or may not be the property manager. You might be more hands off, but the syndication, you're completely hands off. It's in the responsibility of the operator, the person that's actually managing and taking care of that investment to do all the work. It's really more like an investment, like you think a financial advisor would offer, but they never offer these. It's totally outside of their wheelhouse. They can't offer it legally. So these syndications, you can make, again, double digit returns very passively and do really well with it. Uh, I'll tell you, I've had some of my clients get super excited because some of the syndications will make more than they expect because not only are they making cash flow, some of them might make eight, 10% of regular cash flow every year, but then on the back end when it sells, they might make a massive 50 plus percent bonus return at the end of it. So sometimes it might end up averaging 15, 20% or more on these syndicated investments. Now, not as cool as the 300% return I got on that Memphis property, but still they can make good amount of money in those kind of things. And again, it's very passive. Here's a warning though. You have to have to make sure you invest with good operators, operators that have been around, in my opinion, at least 12 to 15 years, and they've been doing it successfully in that space. If not, I would be careful, right? So just be warned. It's more important when you try to invest in those kind of things, it's more important about who you're investing with than what you're investing in. And then the fifth and final one, I told you, it's gonna be worth your time. Here's how you can make money with no money at all, is you can make money with your credit. Your credit. Now, I don't mean just, you know, you're, you're a good person, I give you credit, yay. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about your credit score or more specifically, a credit card. I'm not talking about bonus points or mileage or anything like that. What I mean is this, and I'll give you an example of what happened with my father and I. See, when I was trying to buy my first big real estate property, I didn't have a lot of credit history. I was in my 20s. A lot of banks didn't have a lot of faith. Now, I had plenty of income coming in, had plenty of cash flow, but I didn't have the credit history. So I remember I went to my dad and I remember learning some of these credit techniques from a, from a particular author. And I went to my dad and I said, dad, do you remember that credit card, that visa card you had me use one time for books in college? Yeah, I remember that. Do you know if you could put me on as an authorized user? Uh, why? What do you want with the credit card? Nothing. I don't even want the credit card. In fact, send the credit card to your address and you can shred it. I don't need the credit card. All I want is be put on as an authorized user. I want to be like almost like a co-borrower on that credit card. Why? And I said, well, here's why dad, because if I'm on your credit card, all that history from 1995 on till now, it shows up on my credit as if I had this long credit history. Didn't matter if I wasn't on it in 1995 when you set it up, it's gonna be just like if I was on it from the beginning. So it'll show that I'll have this long credit history having the credit card on my name. What's the risk to me, Chris? Nothing, because again, you get the credit card, you can shred it, you do whatever. If there's any risk, you have to have my social security number and my date of birth and my phone number to even put me on as an authorized user. So really I'm trusting you to do that. And so he put me on the credit card and immediately that month, my credit score jumped up 23 points, just enough 
to be able to get a better interest rate on my mortgage. That was worth it to me. Now I didn't pay him for that, but there are many people, and I've done it myself, where I've offered to put people on my credit card as an authorized user. Again, I send the credit card to me, I shred it, but then I charge them, I say, here, pay me 200 bucks to do that. Uh, there's even brokers out there, a few of them that are doing this kind of thing where they'll even make the whole connection. They'll broker the deal between the person looking for that credit card and the person that has a credit card. So here's the thing, if you have a credit card, even if you have bad credit score, but you have a credit card with good credit history where you have not ever been late and the credit card is paid down to 10% or less of the limit, so your balance is less than 10% of that limit that you have, you could be using that credit card to make you money and it costs you no money out of pocket. You can actually put people on your credit card, boost up their credit score to help them save interest. And as a result, you could charge them saying, hey, listen, you pay me X amount of dollars, I'll put you on my credit card for X amount of time. And that's what you do. Now, some people might say it's a little bit sketchy. Hey, it's legit, people can do it. It's up to you whether you do that or not, but it's a pretty cool way that if you wanna help somebody out, especially any credit, and think about it, even if you don't make money off of it, if you have kids that need a credit boost, why not put them on that credit card to get the history so they can finance their own dang cars and you don't have to co-sign on it, right? It gives them that credit history. So lots of cool ways to use it and lots of cool ways to make money. All right, I would love to hear in the comments below, what are your five ranked things? What are the top five ways you love to create passive income? Or what were your favorites of the ones we listed here? And if you like this video, check out how to buy a car with infinite banking.